Welcome r slash M thinks we are a daker. Welp, her child is now gone. M walks into the store with LG. It's rather early in the morning. M looks around, asks me if I could watch her child. Me, oh no, I'm terrible with children. Sorry. M tells me that it's not for that long, and I shouldn't be such a fuss about it. I still politely refuse. It's not my job to watch children. I'm afraid to do something wrong. What happens? M leaves the store. Who do I find hidden in the corner? LG who seems to be rather shy slash fearful. This happened back in a time before everyone had smartphones. The kid obviously didn't have a mobile on it. I suspected the mother also wouldn't. Wasn't too surprised that LG didn't knew the number of their landline. I sigh. What are you gonna do? If something happens to that kid while being in the store and you being the only present employee you're gonna have a bad time. Me. Hey girl. What's your name? LG. Her name. Me. I'm. My name and surname. LG. Happy like only kids can be if they think they did something smart or they knew something. My surname is. Surname. Now this rang a bell. I had a good customer with the same surname. It turns out that it's her dad. I didn't get paid enough to babysit. In fact I didn't even got paid enough to do my normal work. I call her dad at his workplace since we saved that number in our system. The call went along those lines. Me. Hi ND. Here's me from bookstores I. ND. Oh hi. Me. How's it going? I don't remember. Having any open orders. Me, yeah, um, look, listen, do you have a daughter? ND, confused, yes why do you ask? Me, what's her name? I just wanted to ensure it's really her dad, and not just a stupid coincidence. If I think now about it, LG told me it's her dad, so I don't know why I wasn't sure. ND apologizes for M's behavior, and tells me he's gonna pick LG up as soon as possible. While waiting for ND I picked up one of our sale books, box with damaged books, that we try to sell with huge discount before throwing away, a picture book from Disney. LG tries to read a little, I read a little. ND arrives, LG runs to him and hugs him, crying that mommy was mean to her. ND soothes her, and thanks me for babysitting her. He gives me a bottle of wine, and buys something small from the store. ND, if M shows up again, could you not tell her that I picked up LG? Me, what? Why? ND, if you don't feel like it, you don't need to. It's rather complicated, and you already did so much for us. ND leaves. In the evening M shows up. Just to point out, she dropped LG at about 9 o'clock. It was 1745. M, where's my daughter? Me, already chugged about half the bottle of wine, and thus a little boost, you're what? M, my daughter. I dropped her in this store and you were here. Me, way too drunk for work, but already decided to go for another job or homeless. Both would have been better, you're what? M was on the edge. Thus I did what I thought was the smartest thing to do. Me, a guy came into the store and picked her up. He seemed nice. Gave me some wine for her. At this point I expected her to explode slash attack me, but she just left the store. A few weeks pass, and ND and LG come to the store. Both happy to see me. ND asks me if I got a few minutes. An excuse not to work. Obviously I took the time for customer service. Gave LG the same book we've read the last time, and had a talk with ND. M and ND were in the middle of a divorce when M dropped LG at our store. One of the reasons ND wanted a divorce was that M wasn't nice to LG. Now in my country as a male it's rather hard to get custody for your child. No matter what. LG wanted to be with ND, but that doesn't matter. M dropping LG in art store was a gift of the heavens. ND took LG to his sister overnight. M pretended that LG was sleeping at one of her friends. ND wanted to call them just to ensure that LG is fine. M didn't wanted that. LG friend didn't knew where LG is. M claimed she dropped LG at LG's friend. ND faked panic and involved the police. M insisted that LG's friend kidnapped LG. Police asked ND and M separately and ND told the police what happened. M still insisted on her dropping LG at LG's friend. 
and he had proof of it being otherwise, since he already called the police when he dropped LG at his sister's house. Now in court Andy apparently said something like M can have all she want, even my wine collection. I just want to be with my daughter. M, knowing that Andy didn't had any money left and had some quite expensive wines agreed. Daughter ended up with Andy, mother paying alimony. What M didn't knew, Andy was replacing his wine collection before the divorce with the cheapest wines he could find at different discounters, gifting away the expensive ones. He knew that M either is gonna take everything from him, or will break his wine collection. We both laugh, I gifted the book to LG who seemed very happy. When M dropped her she was shy, seemed small and now she had such a big smile on her face, and was curious for everything. She could read much better than a few weeks ago. She seemed like a bird taking up to fly towards the sun. I absolutely hated my job, but situations like these make me a little bit nostalgic. Somehow I miss direct interactions with customers. On the other hand I don't. I obviously don't. Friend works as a paralegal for a divorce place that does a lot of divorces. The stories I hear, many things colder happened. Wife lawyer could have just said it was a lost cause cause if they pursue it, she could end up in more trouble, etc. This doesn't sound like a clean marriage so shit's long, expensive, and super messy assuming this is a US. So to me, it's one of those who knows, but I'll believe it, story isn't really at all far-fetched either. Parents always think that work as a personal servers I used to work at a pizza bar, costumers never left their kids with me directly, but they would often get drunk and let the kids do what they want, once a drunk mother made a ruckus that she couldn't find her daughter and why I, 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 I weren't we paying attention to the daughter see if her kid got out the restaurant. Like it was our obligation to watch her kid while serving her. The kid was okay, BTW. She was with other three kids in the bathroom looking at glow in the dark toys. Yeah, I can see this as a hallmark rom com, with you being the plucky heroine. I know, you're a guy, but Hollywood takes such liberties. Of course, in that movie, the store would be a quirky one person shop. So you'd either be the shop owner, or possibly the shop owner's best friend who agreed to look after the shop just for the day, while the shop owner was getting an appendectomy, or something. And the dad is the big man in town, new coma who moved into town as a young man, and faced obstacles and unwelcoming glares, but then he saved the mill, and everyone's jobs, so that's how you recognize the surname. He doesn't blend with all the old inhabitants whose families have been there since before the Civil War, and of course he's rich and handsome. And the M is the prom queen slash beauty queen who married rich, as expected, and then actually let her selfish shallowness show. And the little girl is the most sweetly precocious child ever to sweetly precocious. Oh. And you've had a crush on dad for years, but you were always too ethical to try hitting on a married man, because you're not a bow snatcher. But reading that wedding announcement in the paper, years ago, just broke your heart, asterisk making you give up your dream of becoming a writer, and winning the Pulitzer Prize. But, in the end, with dad's support, and the little girl, to give you the best idea ever, you finally achieve your dream, after all. Yeah, I'd totally watch that movie. That is some Cassie Anthony level bullshit. She had no idea where the child she just dropped off with a stranger for half a full day could be. She came back for the kid she abandoned to the person she left her with sloshed. She lied to the child's father as well as the police, and then tried to implicate the daughter's friend's family as kidnappers. Thank fuck almighty she was so damn stupid, and you are a decent person. That easily could have taken a very dark dead kid turn. It was more important to her to cover her own ass than alert authorities that she didn't have a clue where her child is. Bitch doesn't need to be raising children anyway. There's a show about someone made about their experiences dealing with customers in a bookstore. It's called Skullface Books a la Hondas and I think funny. In my country, America, it's really easy for men to get joint custody, but most men can't even be bothered to fill out a form, let alone leave work unexpectedly even once, to pick up their kids. Women handle the vast majority of that, even when they work full time. No wonder a man acting like a responsible parent seems extraordinary enough to tell a story about. I can't help but wonder if I worked with you, 
I too used to work in a bookshop where we would drink slash smoke the interesting stuff during our shifts. That and play baseball or have sword fights with fluorescent tubes. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Turns out not so much. Those last couple paragraphs were so hard to read with all the acronyms. Is it really that hard to type out mom, dad and daughter?